everybody. The intention of the Mass is for the people of the parish. Can I ask the children of the little church please to make your way out? In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Jesus made himself a servant to show us the meaning of true leadership. To prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Thanksgiving to you, Lamb of God. 
Glory, glory, glory to God. Glory, glory, glory to God. Away the sins of the world. Have mercy on, receive our prayer. Glory, glory, glory to God, glory, glory, glory to God. Let in power at the heart of the Father, Jesus the Lord, He's the Lord the Most High. Glory, glory, glory. To God, glory, glory, glory to God. Let us pray. O God, who founded all the commands of your sacred law upon love of you and our neighbor. Granted by keeping your precepts, we may merit to attain eternal life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. First reading, a reading from the Book of Wisdom. The godless say to themselves, let us lie in wait for the virtuous man, since he annoys us and opposes our way of life, reproaches us for our breaches of the law and accuses us of playing false to our upbringing. Let us see if what he says is true. Let us observe what kind of end he himself will have. If the virtuous man is God's son, God will take his part and rescue him from the clutches of his enemies. Let us test him with cruelty and torture and thus explore this gentleness of his and put his endurance to the proof. Let us condemn him to a shameful death since he will be looked after we have his word for it. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm we say at the beginning and the end. The Lord, the Lord oppose my, my life. O God, oh God save, save me, by, me your by your name. By your power, power uphold, my, uphold cause. my cause. O oh God, hear my, my prayer. Listen, listen to the words of my mouth. For proud, for proud men have risen against me. Ruthless men seek my life. They have no regard for God. But I have God for my help. The Lord opposes my life. I will sacrifice to you that willing heart and praise your name, for it is good. The Lord opposes my life. Second reading, a reading from the letter to St. James. Wherever you find jealousy and ambition, you find disharmony and wicked things of every kind being done. Whereas the wisdom that comes down from above is essentially something pure. It also makes for peace and is kindly and considerate. It is full of compassion and shows itself by doing good. Nor is there any trace of partiality or hypocrisy in it. Peacemakers, when they work for peace, sow the seeds which will bear fruit in holiness. Where do these wars and battles between yourselves first start? Isn't it precisely in the desires fighting inside your own selves? You want something and you haven't got it, so you are prepared to kill. You have an ambition that you cannot satisfy. 
so you fight to get your way by force. Why you don't have what you want is because you don't pray for it. When you do pray and don't get it, it is because you have not prayed properly. You have prayed for something to indulge your own desires. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the gospel. <laughs> Alleluia. 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 I am the light of the world, says the Lord. Anyone who follows me will have the light of life. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. After leaving the mountain, Jesus and his disciples made their way through Galilee, and he did not want anyone to know because he was instructing his disciples. He was telling them, the Son of Man will be delivered into the hands of men. They will put him to death, and three days after he has been put to death, he will rise again. But they did not understand what he said and were afraid to ask him. They came to Capernaum, and when he was in the house, he asked them, What were you arguing about on the road? They said nothing, because they had been arguing which of them was the greatest. So he sat down, called the twelve to him, and said, If anyone wants to be first, he must make himself last of all and servant of all. He then took a little child, set him in front of them, put his arms around him, and said to them, Anyone who welcomes one of these little children in my name welcomes me, and anyone who welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. Last Sunday, we read about the suffering servant in the book of the prophet Isaiah. The book of wisdom in our first reading today describes that suffering servant as the son of God. The godless are after the life of this virtuous man because he annoys them and opposes their way of life. He reproaches the people for breaching the law and accuses them of false living. The godless decide to subject this virtuous man to cruelty and torture, exploring his gentleness and putting him to a shameful death to see if God will save him. The text in the Book of Wisdom has always been interpreted as a reference to the Messiah. The psalmist continues the same thought of those who oppose the life of the righteous person. He cries to the Lord to save him. God will not abandon his faithful servant. The psalmist is confident, saying, But I have God for my help. The Lord upholds my life. <clears throat> the gospel is a second passion and resurrection prediction in Mark. Jesus again tells his disciples that the Son of Man will be delivered into the hands of men put to death and rise on the third day. <clears throat> the disciples do not understand what Jesus is saying, but are afraid to ask him. We can tell that they understood something else because they begin to discuss who would succeed Jesus. While Jesus is telling them something fundamental about his end, the disciples are arguing about who would take over the position of Jesus when he was gone. So he softly rebukes them. If anyone wants to be first, he must make himself last of all and servant of all. The servant is the person who renders service, a helper. Jesus further demonstrates that each of his disciples should emulate the little child. Jesus reveals the kind of humility he desires from his disciples. He is the humble, obedient, and suffering servant who does the will of the Father. Jesus took the servant position 
coming into the world to save us. In the same way, if we are in a position of authority, we must humble ourselves and be the servant of all those in our charge. St. James tells us in the second reading that wherever you find jealousy and ambition, you find disharmony and wicked things of every kind. Many of today's problems could be much easier to solve if only those involved were able to curb their ambitions and see their work as a service to people in the community. We should all be ambitious to do well and achieve success in human life. But if ambition gets out of control, it can lead to an unhealthy mix of greed, jealousy, envy, resentment among individuals. It is sad to see communities falling prey to suspicion and mistrust as a direct result of a few craving for power and asserting themselves. Where do wars and conflicts come from? St. James points to the passions within us to covet what you do not possess. Most wars concern land, oil, or some other natural resources like water or precious metals. Someone has them and someone else wants them. Jesus wants us to imbibe divine wisdom which is pure and makes for peace, kindness, and consideration. Jesus is inviting us to a new openness to the Father. No earthly power will save him from death in Jerusalem. Only his Father can save him. That is what the Father does. That is how the Father welcomes the little ones who put their trust in him. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and dead, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, <coughs> before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. To him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who the Father and the Son is adored and glorified. <coughs> I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, in baptism for the forgiveness of sins, I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In today's Gospel, Jesus gives us a very clear message on how we should treat our families, our fellow men and women, when he tells us, if anyone wants to be first, he must make himself last and servant of all. We pray for the wisdom to accept this guidance and for the humility to practice and live, in, live it, putting others first. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for our local parish community, our priests, our clergy, and their assistants, and ask our Father in heaven to inspire all of us to take a genuine, and where we can, an active interest in the people of our parish, an interest which is generous, kind, and welcoming to all. Adults and children, and those who are vulnerable and potential victims of exploitation and abuse. 
Let us look out for each other. Especially, let us look out for the sick and dying and all who care for them. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. During this month of September, as we celebrate the season of creation, we pray to the Lord that our eyes and the eyes of the world and world leaders be opened to the wonder of this beautiful environment and the food it gives to us. And all of us, especially our leaders, strengthen our resolve to pre protect this wonderful world for our children and future generations and help us to create a world of peace where everyone feels safe from the horrors of troubles, wars, and the recent cyber attacks. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. And on this special Harvest Sunday, we pray for all those who are struggling to feed their families and heat their homes in these difficult economic times. And we thank everyone who has gifted to the porridge food banks. Let us also remember in our prayers the past and those who have died of hunger and famine. And pray our world leaders and I have the awareness and wisdom to share the world's resources ethically, fairly, and morally. So following the words of Jesus in today's gospel and putting themselves last and serving us all with dignity and respect Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Let us pray and I silently for our own intentions. Let us pray for Our Lady, ever mindful that Tuesday is a dedication day to Mary, Our Lady, and let us pray for her to intercede on our behalf. Hail Mary, full of grace, of grace, the Lord is, Lord is with thee. Blessed, blessed art thou amongst Mary. women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Holy Mary Mother, Mother of God, God pray, for pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Amen. Lord God, as you reach out to us and draw us to a place of safety, give us open hearts to trust you and to work with you wherever you may lead through Christ our Lord.
day in Little Church, we heard how this, the disciples argued about who was the most important. Jesus told us we must serve others to be important to God. Thank you. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. <laughs> Receive with favor, O Lord, we pray, the offerings of your people, that what they profess with devotion and faith may be theirs through these heavenly mysteries, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed man in your own image and set humanity over the whole world in all its wonder to rule in your name over all you have made and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so with all the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts who pray by sending thine spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up 
for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took a chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. To get out Francis our Pope and Mark our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that to the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, who blessed Joseph as spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, who may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as you await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant a peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's offer each other a gesture of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Christ. On Friday, Mass will be at 9 a.m., and we will be joined by the Year 7 girls from Upton Hall School. Next Sunday afternoon, 29 September, at 3 p.m., the Carmelite sisters are having benediction in honor of St. Therese of the Child Jesus at the Carmelite Monastery in Beckenhead. All are welcome. Details are on the poster at the back of church. 
October is the month of the rosary. We will say the rosary after the novena each Saturday morning during throughout the month of October. If you would like to lead the rosary on any of the Saturdays, please sign the list at the back of church. I would like to thank all the people who brought donations for the harvest. Please remember to take a newsletter home with you so that you can read about the news and events within the parish and beyond. Let us pray. Graciously raise up, O Lord, those you renew with this sacrament, that we may come to possess your redemption, both in mystery and in the manner of our life, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, the Mass is ended.